Hello, this is Key of W here. So this is a bit new for me. I'm not a Let's player. Uh, I don't actually intend to become a Let's player. I'm not pivoting or anything. Um, if you take a look at the rest of my channel, I am still a musician. That's still what I do. Uh, however, if you look at the date this video is uploaded, um, this is during or shortly after, if I'm extremely lazy, all of our quarantining period for the COVID-19 epidemic that's going on right now. Uh, so my job is basically gone, and I'm still looking around for stuff. Not really important to this video, but it gives a reason why I have a bunch of time now to sit at my house and play video games, and then record myself playing video games and talking about the video games. That's enough of that intro. Basically, I just want to show you a game series that I'm really excited about and I've loved, and not very many people know this even exists. Uh, this game series is called Submachine, and if you just look up Submachine in your Google... Uh, bar here, you will find it should be the first uh, result. So before we go anywhere, I recommend you do that. This particular video is just an intro video, so you can skip ahead to the next one if you actually want to, you know, watch me play the games. But I, I wanted to briefly talk about this series uh, because it, it is exciting to me. Um, it came out, well, the first game came out in the year 2005. Uh, which feels a million years ago now. But 2005 was a very different time for making games for any of the Gen Z people watching this video. Uh, maybe will not remember what it was like then not to be, you know, one of those old guys like, back in my day, we had... It, but it was different. You couldn't just download the latest Unreal Engine, make a game, and put it on a store. It was a little harder to do things. Uh, what people did instead was they would post games mostly made with flash player sometimes with other sorts of uh, uh, materials but they post games to websites like Newgrounds or J is games or mini clip or congregate there'd be these websites that were devoted to free online games most of which were complete garbage but that hasn't really changed if you check uh, the Steam store today it's still mostly garbage but it was a little bit different type of garbage then it was uh, you know very quickly made games uh, usually by young people who you know were just starting out in their game making ability and then this guy comes along uh, Matus Skutnik I'm very sorry uh, Mr. Skutnik there I will just say Skutnik because I believe I can pronounce that pretty well uh, he is Polish and uh, his abilities with English are much higher than mine with Polish so I apologize for completely butchering the name but Skutnik here comes along uh, with a game called Submachine in 2005, posted to these such websites. And of course, they become popular immediately because they are a cut above the rest of the games you see. They are part of a genre that was really popular at the time, um, sort of the tail end of the popularity of this type of game, uh, which really happened in the early 2000s, uh, called the Escape Room game. And that was an evolution of those point-and-click 90s adventures like Myst, and Riven and Seventh Guest. Uh, the escape room game was you're in a room, you can't get out, and you have to solve a bunch of puzzles to get out. And uh, most of them were extremely small because you're in one room, and the art style was extremely crude, limited, uh, because most of these people creating the games were not artists, so they used very simple art they could find or they could draw themselves, and that's how you would get these really simple games online. And a lot of them were not so great. Then there were some that were really popular, like Crimson Room, was probably the first big one. Submachine was another really good one. There were some others. Uh, you can just look it up, honestly, if, uh, if you want to. It's not really the point of this. But just to say that Submachine basically comes in with this a game that fits in with the genre, with this one right here, which at the time was just called Submachine. It wasn't Submachine 1. Uh, Skutnik was not planning on making a series out of this, but it got really popular, and he wanted to make another game. So when he started working on the second one, he wanted to connect it somehow with the story. So he kind of had to retroactively changed this one and in fact this particular game has like three or four versions of it based on you know how far along he was in developing the story so the very first version of this is nothing then then there's a version with a larger puzzle and then there's versions where he adds lore things like that and then he makes this whole series over a period of time uh, now this game came out in 2005 as i mentioned uh, but the rest of these did not come out shortly thereafter um, they are spread out over a period of 12 is that right 12 years 2005 to 2016 so 12 years inclusive uh, 
So that is the long story of Submachine. And then there are some spin-off games down here as well. Um, I'm not really interested in the spin-off games at the moment. I just want to show you the main series because it's really good. I think uh, a good example, one of the best examples of an indie developer using the system at the time, like Newgrounds and JS Games, using that system to create something really large and effective and wonderful. Uh, anyway, I'm going to gush if I go on too long. I think I've covered the basics of this. So to end the video, I'm just going to tell you how to find this game series. If you couldn't already tell by just seeing the name of it and the name of the developer and the name of the website here, but you can Google Submachine and it should be the first um, result. I highly recommend that you get these games because they are free. Uh, you can play them all for free online. Uh, if you have the cash to spare, however, you can click here and you can buy the games. You get these 10 plus these three for 25 bucks. All, all of them, no DRM or anything. You just download the executable and you get a uh, free soundtrack with that. I really recommend doing that if you have the cash. I realize if you're in a situation like mine uh, at this time, we all have no work coming in and no income, so if you want something free to play, this is a really, really good option. And then if you come into some money later, you should totally give this guy your money. Scott Nick deserves it. Uh, he's a wonderful creator and an artist and everything and storyteller. So with that, I'm going to move on to actually playing these games, and you should be able to see why I'm so interested in them. All right, uh, until next time, go ahead and uh, check out the next video. Thanks. Bye.